Alright guys, M Tech Guy here and today we're going to be taking a look at a problem I've got with the Little One series and this is a super common problem on these cars and it's all to do with the windscreen washer jets. Now what you'll find over time with these cars that the washer jets, the spray, can become really weak, really poor and eventually it'll stop altogether. <laughs> Now that's what mine have got like, just a poor sprinkle on the windscreen there, it's hardly doing anything and eventually it will stop altogether, mine hasn't got there just yet but today we're going to get it sorted out. So what causes this problem? Well if you don't use your screen wash that often what can happen over time is that screen wash sitting there in the reservoir will start to solidify, it'll turn into a bit of a sludge almost like a jelly right in the bottom of the reservoir there and then what happens is when you do operate your windscreen washers that jelly will get sucked up into the pumps. Now the pumps on the inlet side, they've got a, a strainer there and what happens is that strainer gets blocked and it'll just get more blocked and more blocked over time. Your windscreen washers get weaker and weaker until it gets completely blocked and then it'll stop altogether. Now them strainers there are there to protect the pump so they're doing the job properly but of course it does affect the operation of your windscreen washers. Okay, so what do we do about this? Well. There's two ways to approach this, there's a quick fix that you can do or there's the proper fix. Now the quick fix, what you can do with the filler neck under the bonnet there, if you stick a hose down there and create a siphon and get your washer fluid siphoning out of the reservoir and at the same time stick a hose in there and flush it out, you will flush most of that jelly out of there but it won't last that long, the problem will come back. So the proper way to fix it is to remove the reservoir altogether pull the pumps out, give the whole lot a good clean, reassemble the whole lot, get some fresh fluid in there and get it flushed right the way through the system and she'll be good to go for many years to come. Alright, so let's take a look at the steps required to get your windscreen washer jets working like new. Now it's a bit of a funny setup on the One Series because the windscreen washer reservoir doesn't live up inside the engine bay there, you'll see the filler neck there but that snakes right down and the reservoir actually sits inside the wheel well here so there is a bit of work to access it but it's not a big deal and it's pretty straightforward with some very basic hand tools. So to start off with we need to get the front end of the car up in the air and then get this front right hand wheel removed from the car. Alright, so now we've got the front end of the car securely placed on jack stands, we can now remove that front right hand wheel. Okay, so now that we've got the front wheel removed, we need to now gain access to the windscreen washer reservoir which lives behind this wheel liner here. So next up we're going to remove this and to be able to do so we need to first take out these three plastic pins. Now mine have had plastic screws put in here but the original ones there'll be a little plastic plug with a pin down the centre of it and what you need to do is push the pin right through, let it drop down and then pull these out and then once you've got them plastic pins removed there's a few nuts and screws to remove to be able to get the wheel liner out of there so we've got a screw up here that takes an 8mm socket, two more up here that take an 8mm socket and another screw that takes an 8mm socket up here up the back there, there's a nut down here that takes a 10mm socket and then there's two more underneath that take a 10mm socket also, that one there and that one there and then you'll also find that you'll have a plastic screw here that takes a T30 Torx bit, mine's missing but you'll need a T30 Torx bit to get that out of there. So we'll get them removed now. Alright, so now that we've got all the fasteners removed, we're now ready to remove the wheel liner itself and to be able to do that, we're just going to grab a hold of it at the bottom and feed it out 
and the same at the top and we're just going to collapse it like that and then feed it out of the wheel well there all right so now that we've got the wheel liner removed you can now see the windscreen washer reservoir hiding up inside the wheel well there now it can be quite tricky to remove you do need to tease it out in a few awkward positions but it's not that big of a deal now holding that in we've got a 10 mil fastener there that needs removing then we've got the tube here that goes to the filler neck up inside the engine bay that just unclips there let the fluid drain out and then we've got a couple of cables here that do need disconnecting from the pumps but you can't really get at them till we get this so far out of the wheel well there but before we get too carried away we do want to look at removing the side indicator here because what can happen is that sits inside the wheel arch there it will catch on the reservoir so it can make it very awkward to remove and you'll see your wing bulging out there so before we do anything we're just gonna remove that get it out of the way so to be able to remove the side indicator what we need to do is grab it at the back and push it forward because there's a metal spring clip at the front there that'll compress and then there's a plastic hook on the inside there so we're gonna push it forward unhook the rear slide it out like that just like that and there you can see the metal spring clip at the front and the plastic hook at the back there all right so now that we've got the fastener removed and the hose disconnected we can now remove the windscreen washer reservoir Okay, so before we go any further, we're gonna undo the three electrical connectors here. We're gonna unclip this harness from the reservoir itself, just a little plastic clip there. Remove the two hoses there. All right, so here we have it. Now we've got the reservoir removed from the car. You can see we've got our two washer pumps there and also a little level indicator there. So first off, we'll remove this just by twisting it, pull it out. And next up we'll remove the pumps and to do that you just want to pull them forward and then straight up and out just watch you don't pull it too far forward because you can break the neck at the bottom there that's it Try to do this one-handed while i'm filming now you can see this side we've still got the strainer stuck in the hole there so we'll remove that now we just might need a screwdriver to prise it out of there and as always it looks like the actual strainer pieces are missing they'll be sitting inside there they've come off so we'll have to just try and feed them out of this hole here where the hose was connected and then once we've got them out what we're going to do is give this a good flush out with some really warm soapy water give it a good rinse a good flush then flush it out with a hose pipe and then what we'll also do is give them strainers a good clean and then we'll piece it all back together all right so after a bit of messing around i've managed to retrieve the two strainers and as you can see there there's a bit of slime on there and not exactly fully clear so we'll give them a good clean with some hot soapy water same with the rubber bungs there and then we'll piece this all back together onto the pump we'll give the reservoir a good clean inside and then we'll start reassembling everything All right, so I've given it a good swill out with the soapy hot water and then I've flushed it out with the hose pipe. So that should get rid of any gunk and slime sitting in the bottom of the tank there. So before we go any further, it's a good opportunity just to give it a bit of a clean up and we'll get them pumps fitted back to the reservoir.
All right, so there we go, guys. Everything's all cleaned up nicely now. We've got everything back together. So we're now ready to reinstall it back into the car. And it's literally just reverse of removal. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our three electrical connectors fitted back on now. The two hoses from the pumps. And also there's a clip up there for the harness. One there and then one just up there as well. So that's all clipped back together. So now we're ready to feed it back into the wing. So there it is back in position now. So we can now reconnect the hose here and reinstall that bolt there. Okay, so now that's all back together. We can now refit the wheel liner. There we go. We've got the wheel well liner refitted now. Even managed to get myself three proper pins for the wheel liner there. So next up, we'll refit the side indicator and then we can refit the wheel and drop it back down on the front wheels. There we go, that's much better. That's that job sorted. Now, if you do get to this stage and you find that your washer jets are still working quite weak, then it's more than likely that your pump is failing, that it's on its way out. So at that stage, you are gonna have to chuck a new washer pump in. It's not a big deal, they're relatively cheap. But anyhow, that's that sorted for today. All right, guys, so there we have it. That's the windscreen washer jets working like new now. That's that little problem sorted. And as you can see, from the video it's a pretty straightforward DIY it's not going to cost you any money just a few basic hand tools required now if you found a video interesting or useful don't forget to give it a like and make sure you go and check out the rest of my YouTube channel for more BMW DIY videos consider subscribing if that's your cup of tea I'm M Tech Guy thanks a lot for watching <laughs>